The Bible says that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. One of the things that's a very important aspect within you, and yet we got to understand this as well, is that within ourselves we have an important thing inside us. And this thing is extremely powerful and can affect the physical world around us. It's the soul. It's the soul. Now, the soul is a very interesting study, the soul. The soul is where all your feelings are at. It's your personality. It's your mind. Now, let me make this simple for you concerning soul. The Bible says we have body, soul, and spirit, right? Okay, body is easy to figure out. Body is this thing right here that we're looking at, this flesh within us. The spirit is our spiritual nature when we got saved. When we get saved, then God has, you, has to give you his Holy Spirit, and he makes you spiritually grow. So there's a spiritual side of you. Okay, then what's the soul? It's an intermediate plane between your spirit and your body. And you might go, okay, that does not make sense. You've got to make it more clear than that. Let me make it more simple. The soul is the real you. Okay, what do I mean by that? When you die, your body goes to the grave, but where do you go? You go to heaven or to hell. So that's the simplest way to say it, is the real you, truly you. That's the soul. Now you gotta understand this, is that the soul, that's why we say it has feelings, personality, and mind, the soul, because it makes up you, what is you. The decisions that you made, the thinking, the choices, etc. It's the real you. Now Satan, what he likes to do now is that he wants to attack this thing. It's you. He wants to attack you. More than your body, it's your soul that he wants. It's your soul. Now how he attacks this is through several means, which is very interesting. He will attack it through... Eastern religions, Hinduism, yoga, Buddhism, martial arts. What? Martial arts? Well, of course you can have martial arts, but if it relates to something where it's within you, where it's something that has to do with the soulish natures, the spiritual component, you got to flee from that. That is demon, that is demonic right there. Now you might say, okay, what's wrong with Eastern religions, Pastor? The, th the main problem with this thing is that there's a thing called the emptying of the mind. Yeah. Emptying yourself. And then focusing on a particular object or thing instead. But it's the emptying of yourself. Now, who is the real you? This is your soul, right? Satan wants you to be outside of you, lose control of yourself, and give in to what? Something else. Now look, uh, keep your hand at 2 Corinthians 10. So we're going to look at Luke chapter 11, I apologize. And then we'll look at verse 24. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. So this devil left this certain person. But the devil wants to go back inside the person. Okay, but when he goes back inside the person, look at this. What he finds inside the body is what? Verse 25. And when he cometh, he findeth it what? Swept and garnished. See, it's emptied. That leaves more room for what? Verse 26. Then goeth he and taketh to him what? seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. That's even worse. Oh, I attained this peace from stress through yoga and other stuff. Well, you better be careful of that. That's some kind of spirit that's inside you. And I prefer the spirit, the Holy Spirit that gives me peace, Amen. rather than that kind of spirit. You don't think Satan will make you feel good? Satan, he will make you feel good. And that's how he deceives you. See, soul is about feelings, personality, mind. That's what he's aiming for. And once he uh, heightens up those senses, he can uh, spiritually possess you. 
So it's through this emptiness that you leave more room for Satan. Because when you give less of yourself and more room for basically emptiness, that gives more room for the devil to go inside you. That's what, I mean, look at that verse. That's what the verse says. You get seven more spirits worse. And the state of that man is worse than the first. Why? Because he was emptied. He was emptied right there. Think about this. Why is it that when you have such kind of emptiness, you can have some kind of power that's really strange and even supernatural? Scientists are still baffled on how certain shamans can heal certain sicknesses. Scientists are still baffled on how the mind works. But it gets to a point where people can actually, these Hindus and certain uh, specialized old elderly men, they can just walk on coals of fire. Why is that? That's the power of the soul. There's that emptiness of the mind where you focus on something. Certain martial arts where it's really dark, where you can lift up heavy objects and then break certain hard metal. That's where it gets really spiritual right there. And it gets to a point of dem uh, demonism. So Satan, he likes to attack the soul. Another thing right here that he uses is psychology. Now we can put science in here. So now you got Eastern religious mysticism, and now he can use science. Now, I don't know if some of you knew this, but do you know what psychology means? Logi, we know that this means study. That's why we have a lot of logies in a lot of different names today in terminologies. But right here, psych is from the Greek word suke, which means soul. And remember, the soul contains what? The mind. That's where psychology comes in. It's a study of the mind. But now we can give scientific explanations for this. Now, what is uh, wrong with psychology? Now, if it re relates to something, there are actual, literal cases where there are biological problems. So in that sense, I'm not telling you to throw away your meds and then cause problems for you and your family, okay? Uh, if there's the last thing I want is some crazy person in our church and then they blame me for because... He told me not to take meds. No, I'm not that type of person at all. Sometimes there are biological illnesses that should be called for. Yes, there is a thing about counseling where you can help the person out. Why else do you think the Bible says in a multitude of counselors there is safety? Why is it the, the Bible says bear each other one another's burdens? Okay, there is something like that. Okay, don't get me wrong. But there is something right here where it gets outside something without substance without research, without biology, and it gets dark. You know what the greatest example is? Carl Jung. He's the greatest example of that. Now, I don't know if you studied Jung, but here's the thing about him. Freud, he believed a lot of things uh, contained within biological urges and drives. Jung believed it was towards something spiritual, and he called those things archetypes. So within these archetypes, he believed that a lot of us on what we think we actually repress uh, a greater majority percentage of them inside our unconscious. So basically, for example, there might be something sexual in your behavior, in your conversation that you thought of, but you're not actually doing outwardly. Consciously, you're not showing that. Why is that? Because you feel that's abnormal to the people around you. That's taboo. So what you do is you shove it inside your unconsciousness. Now that should be actually a good thing. It should be a good thing that a lot of things that are considered sinful and burdensome to the brethren, that should not be shown outwardly. It should be casted down, the Bible says. But Jung doesn't believe that. It's not healthy to do. So he called these things archetypes. Basically, it's a universal thing that everyone shares. In specifics, it's different, but universally, it's the same. Whether it be a belief in God or something sexual we think about, or certain objects, uh, etc. All these things, we all share it. But in specifics, when we behave it, act it out, or how it's pictured or shown, it's all different. Now, you see how wrong this could be and how demonic it could be. It can be pretty much one world, so to speak, where it doesn't matter which kind of God you think about. So Jung was heavily into occult, uh, mysticism, mythologies, and religion. And he believed that everyone shared in common an archetype. And his job was to put that thing that you shoved inside your unconsciousness to get it out of there. 
So it's to conjure up, get that thing that you shoved inside your unconscious, get it out of there. Something dark called a shadow, he wants it out of there. And then once he gets it out of there, then his job is for you to learn how to get that unconscious thing and your conscious state into a balanced form where it can be a complete and a whole you. So individuation or self-actualization. Now, you know what's dangerous about that? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. This is what you got to be doing with that. You shouldn't conjure them out of there. And I don't want to know every specific detail of your dirty dream. <laughs> Jung, he's really big into dream interpretation. Yeah. And I don't want to know your dream, friend. Yeah. If it was something really wicked, sinful. Because the, the mind can be very wicked on a lot of things. Your imagination can run wild with a lot of wicked things that you thought, wow, I can't believe I thought that. Yeah. And you know what you should do? Talk about it in church. No! <laughs> Cast it down. Get it out of there. Cover it under the blood. Amen. But Jung's job is to know, talk, tell me about it. Well, I told you about it the thousandth time. Well, tell me again. I don't want to know your dirty, secret, wicked thing, man. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. See, not conjuring them up out of there. Amen. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity, see, that repression, that locking up, Every thought to the what? Obedience of Christ. That repression is not healthy. Get it out of there. No, I don't want it out of there. I want it repressed, locked up, held captive under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want it under the blood. This flesh is so wicked. You know what Paul said in Romans chapter 7? He has a dark side to him. He realizes that. And he says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he said... The things that my other side wants to do, I don't want to do, but I do it. See, you know what Paul lived a life of? Not conjuring them out of there and trying to find a balanced state to make a full, healthy... No, no, he wanted it out of there. That's what he wanted. That's a dangerous thing with Carl Jung. In fact, didn't you know that uh, Jung's study has no research? And that's what schools teach you. Did you know that? There is no research to back it up. That's what my higher education said. They blatantly said that. Why would they have this in? You know why? Because it benefits a person. Yeah. Just like yoga, just like martial art, whatever works for you, we should have it. Here's another thing. The last thing that I want to talk about, which is evil. So he got science, and then he got uh, religious mysticism. But there's another thing that people did not really think about. And the other thing that Satan uses is Christianity on the soul. Now you might go, what? Yeah. You're serious? Yeah, Christianity. You know why? Majority of Christian churches, if majority consists of this bunch. You ready for this? It's the charismatic movement. Uh, oh, yeah. You know why? In their healing crusades, you know what they do? If you don't get healed, they blame it on you, your faith. You lack faith. You know what that is? That's the placebo effect. You know what that all is? That's the mind. There is actual research to back this up, by the way, concerning this. There are scientists who they done experiments and tests where they would tell a bunch of person that this drug will actually cure you. And the people, they took the drug, and the drug actually had nothing to do with the healing. It didn't, uh, they made sure the drug had nothing to do with the healing. And when they took the meds, they got healed. There are actual cases of people who couldn't walk, they started walking. Didn't you know that? Why? Because they were told it would heal them. A certain drug, a certain uh, session, etc., that it would heal them. That's the power of the placebo effect. That's the mind. The mind, you got to realize this you have a thing called the soul in you, and it, it can affect the outer realm. It can do miracles sometimes. That is backed up by research. Scientists are still baffled by this placebo. They are trying to wonder how it works. But see, that all comes from the mind. You know, how, you know why you got healed at the charismatic meetings? It's to keep that placebo effect going. It's, you don't have enough. Why do you think, use your head. 
Why do they resort to you don't have enough faith? You don't have enough faith. You don't have enough faith. That's why you're not healed. You can't walk. That's why you can't hear. That's why you can't uh, move around. That's why you're not cured of this disease. You know why? It's all trying to get your mind, that placebo going about, I am healed. I am healed. I am. This will heal me. This will heal me. And when you do that, that can even deceive yourself where you think you're healed. You know what that is? That's, that's demonic. That's demonic. Did Jesus Christ have to do that? No, he didn't have to do that. You know what he did? Well, I'll tell you what he did. Was there any faith required? No, there was no faith required. We're going to look at the book of John. Look at the book of John. Look at John chapter 18. John chapter 18, verse 10. Was this guy full of faith? Was he a believer? No. Here's an example of a person who was an unbeliever. Okay? He was not a believer. He was an unbeliever. Look at this. John 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. This guy was the person who was arresting Jesus, who was an enemy of Jesus. What did Jesus do? Uh, look at uh, verse 11. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Now in here, he doesn't give uh, the exact story about what happened. But if you look at the book of Matthew, where it repeats about that servant, you know what Jesus did? He picked up that ear, put it back into the guy's head, and he healed him. And that guy was an unbeliever. That guy was an unbeliever. Uh, did you look at the book of John chapter, if I recall from my memory, 6 probably? But at that chapter, well, you know what? We'll just look over there. Just look over there. So in the book of John, what Jesus did is that in John chapter 5, John chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 11, verse 11. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. So notice that this man, who was healed by Jesus, didn't even have faith in Jesus to begin with. Because he didn't even know who Jesus was. But he got healed. He got healed like that. Did you look at John chapter uh, 9? John chapter 9. John chapter 9. If you look at uh, verse 6 and 7, this blind man got healed. But he didn't believe on Jesus Christ then. You know when he believed in Jesus Christ? He believed on, uh, if you look at verse 24 and 25, you'll see that the blind man even said that, I don't know if Jesus is a sinner or, or not. I just know that he just healed me and I got healed. See, that showed he didn't even have faith to begin with. This was an actual healing. And what I mean by actual, I mean actual healing, like right on the spot like that. Nothing was required from his part. And then if you look at verse 35 through 37, he believed. When did he believe? Long after he got healed. Long after he got healed. Now think about it. The atheists have a right to say, I'm going to believe in God if I see this miracle and that miracle. Don't they have a right to say that? Well, why can't you guys do that then, huh? And then convert all the atheists. You know why you can't do that? Because you don't have that much faith, you healer you. You don't have that much faith that you can conjure up the power at that time. That shows you don't have that much faith in God's power. You know what these disciples, these apostles did? They had so much faith in the power of God, they could raise dead people back to life. They could go from uh, a group of people in a town and just by their shadow heal the people. They didn't have to prepare a meeting. They didn't have to demand faith, faith, and scream faith out of the person. They didn't have to have everything set up and prepared. No, it's just random, just randomly on the spot when they're asked and called upon to heal, take care of something, they did it. None of these healers can do it randomly on the spot. It all had to be set up. That's the placebo effect, see? Because they have to set the stage. They have to set the mood with the music. They have to motivate you through the preaching, through the uplifting, and then heal a person right in front of your face so that you can conjure up enough faith to be healed, and they will demand you to have faith. 
they will keep saying, you don't have enough faith to be healed. That is detrimental, hurtful in the lives of people who did have faith, but supposedly they did not have enough to get healed. Isn't that sad? That's very sad. That is harming people's lives. So that's the majority of Christian churches. That's why we are against the speaking of tongues, healings, and seeing visions, and uh, being able to give a prophecy. Oh, I prophesy that Obama, that he will be, you know, blah, 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 blah. Look, we're against all of that. These are signs that were only strictly from the power of God during the days of the apostles. And you could do that with confidence. And you could do it randomly on the spot. You don't have to set a stage for that one. 